Hey y'all. Okay. We are back again. Yes, we are. Um, today we're going to talk about math. This is like the second half to my video that I put out last week. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch that, please go back and watch that. Um, also, if you haven't to hit that subscribe button, what you waiting for? I'm just trying to figure it out. What are you waiting for, friend? This is your time to be successful. This is definitely your opportunity, okay? Let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're going to talk about ratios and proportions. Um, and some of you all struggle with this because sometimes you all don't understand when you need to use this and when you don't need to use it, that sort of thing. But um, today we're just really going to focus on how to solve ratio and proportions, okay? Um, when you're compounding, you are going to be required to figure out how much of an ingredient you need to use, what parts um, need to be used, that's so forth and so forth, so forth and so on. Um, so I did go ahead and give us a little, you know, tip down here. Um, to me, ratios and proportions are not hard to do. It's definitely um, something that's doable and it's just crisscross, multiply and divide, okay? So um, let's go ahead and go to the next thing. Let me make sure. Okay, so here's our ratio proportion practice, okay? Um, you are going to have your top numbers at the top and then your bottom numbers at the bottom. Now, when we get ready to do the math part where we are actually compounding and doing like the actual calculations part of it, um, I would normally have milligrams behind this to or micrograms or some type of unit. And then at the bottom, I would have milliliters on the left side and milliliters on the right side. But because we're just putting our feet in the water, Okay. And we're just getting used to doing this. We didn't use all the units. We're just trying to get comfortable with solving ratios and proportions. Okay. So um, normally what we do is we crisscross multiply. Now I'm not going to crisscross multiply the two times the X. That's pointless. I see people do that all the time. And to me, it's confusing because it's like you crisscross multiplying a number with a letter. I don't think it's always necessary or always, what is it? I don't think it's always easy to do that, I guess, in a sense, for lack of better words. But some people do, and if that's how you learn, that's okay. Because one thing you know about me is, baby, I don't care how you get to the answer as long as we get to the same spot because there's more than one way to skin a cat. So um, what I would do in this situation is four times 10 and then divide it by two. Okay, so I prefer to always crisscross multiply the uh, diagonally where there are two numbers that can multiply against one another and then divide it by the oddball or the number that's left out. That's the easier way for me. Um, number two, we did the same thing four times 100 divided by 40. Baby, that's it. Okay, number three. Now, don't get all crazy because now we didn't increase the numbers. 750 times 500 divided by two. And another thing that I like to do is I don't do 750 times 500 and then hit the equal sign and then go back and do it by the 250. I just run it all together. So normally what I do in my calculator and hopefully hopefully you have your calculator with you um, is I normally just do 750 times 500. Let's see if I can do that. And then... Um, divided by 250 and it gives me the, the 1500. Okay. Another thing I want to mention to you all is if you haven't got used to using the calculator, please get used to using one because on the test, you will be provided a calculator, a scratch sheet of paper and um, a, your writing utensil. So definitely get used to using calculators. I don't want you spending time trying to answer these questions problems or trying to do the math in your head when my students be doing it i'll be like baby what you trying to prove and who you trying to prove it to because i ain't here for it and not okay because look this is we got i want to say we got 90 minutes to answer these questions and we got 90 questions to answer baby look all that use them calculators that's what they are there for don't let it 
get in your mind where you feel like you need to prove something to somebody because baby you you the only person taking the test and nobody else is going to see it the other thing i would tell you about test taking is when you take this exam i want you to do all of the questions you know first do all the questions you know first flag the ones you do not know because when you first start this board exam you want to build momentum. You need to build that confidence. You need to tell yourself that, baby, I can do this because I'm here and everything in my past has prepared me for this moment. That's what you, your, your, your confidence needs to see, okay? So um, with that being said, you want to make sure that you are taking your time um, and answering the ones you know first and then flagging the ones you don't know, okay? Um, and that's just a little tip for you because ain't nobody watching how many times you flag it. Okay. Only person that knows it is you. And so what if you flag 20 questions in a row, who's going to know? How are they going to know? Okay. Uh, the metric system, most commonly, commonly used metric system in pharmacy is liters, milliliters, um, kilograms, grams, milligrams, and micrograms. Those are the most common metric systems used in the pharmacy, okay? Um, when you see these metric systems being used, you do want to make sure you understand them because a milligram, grams, kilograms, and micrograms, those are all weight. That's how much something weighs. That is how much something, um, you know, is, that's how it's measured. But volume is, volume is going to be liters. Volume is going to be like the liquid that I have in here. But this chapstick is probably going to be measured in grams. And it is, it's 2.83 grams. Why? Because this is a solid, right? It's a solid. Hopefully you can see that. It's a solid, Okay. And this is a liquid. So I can't measure a liquid in grams because this is not a solid. Baby, look, look, okay. When they told you to come to LW, you should have knew that you was gonna get it. Cause I I'm telling you right now, we passing our free game all day today. And we making sure that our friends know what it is. And so they can pass that board exam and not keep wasting that 129, baby, because y'all running it up. Okay, we want to make sure that you understand what's behind it. So when you think about weight, you think about kilograms, grams, milligrams, or micrograms. Volume is going to be liters. Why? Because it's a liquid. That's why. Um, and then we have those conversions. So this is where a lot of my friends get tricked up and they, you know, wind up um, getting just a little confused and frustrated. When you're looking at the conversions, you're always going to use the number 1,000. 1,000 is your conversions when you are dealing with micrograms to milligrams from grams to kilograms, that sort of thing, okay? Um, and then also kilograms, micrograms, milligrams, and grams. So when you, let's say we're going from micrograms to milligrams, then we're going to divide by 1,000 one time. But let's say we need to go from micrograms to grams. That means we're going to divide by a thousand two times because we have two generations to go through. I'll show you this in another video so you can have a better understanding of what that looks like. Because I don't think any of the practice we're going to do today has that. And it's only because we this is basic and we're just kind of taking our time with this just to make sure we get the basic information down first and then we're going to build upon that knowledge. But just so you know, for those of my friends who are advanced, who may just be like, okay, I got this part already. What about if I'm going from micrograms to grams? Then that means you're going to divide by a thousand twice because you need to stop by every generation. So think about the micrograms as being the great grandmother, the milligrams as being the grandmother, and then the grams as being the mama. And if it's Mother's Day, you better shout out all three of them. Uh Look, okay, I'm just telling you because we don't want our problems. We don't want our problems, okay? Um, and so with that being said, you are always going to stop by and make sure you wave and you speak to that generation to ensure you get to the right answer, okay? Um, how do I know that I'm going to be dividing, Lindsay, and not multiplying? Because that's why I get confused. Friend, come on with the questions because I got answers, Okay. When you, the reason you know that you are going to divide when you're going from micrograms to milligrams 
is because you are dropping a letter. You dropping a letter. So instead of, so micrograms to milligrams means that you drop the C. Milligrams to grams means that you drop the M. Okay. Um, how do I know that I need to multiply by a thousand? Well, because I'm going from grams to milligrams, multiply by a thousand, milligrams to micrograms, I'm adding these letters. So I need to multiply by a thousand. Okay. So the more you do that, the more you understand, okay, this is what, this is going to help me to remember how I need to multiply or if I need to divide by a thousand, because I do understand that that can be a little tricky when you don't know which way you're going. Okay. Um, we have the first one is 0 0.88 micrograms equals how many milligrams? Now I'm doing something a little different where I'm putting the answers on the board, but if y'all want me to cover the answers up so you can have an opportunity to work the problem on your own, let me know. Um, but at the same time, feel free to still follow these steps because even though the answer is on the board, there could be a typo and there could be something, you know, that's not correct up here, please feel free to walk all the way through it. And then also it gets you into the routine and to, you know, learning how to actually put this stuff in your calculator and solve the problem. So just because you see the answer here don't mean that you shouldn't be working through it in your calculator with me, okay? Um, also make sure you have paper and pen because, or paper and pencil, but something to write with, some, just something to write with because I'm dropping gems, Stuff be coming out. I be forgetting I even know it until I start talking to you. And then you bring the best out of me because I'm bringing the best out of you. And we just helping each other. Okay. So 0 0.88 micrograms divided by a thousand. How do I know that I'm going to divide by a thousand? Because I dropped the letter. I went from micrograms MCG, three letters, to MG, two letters. So I know that I'm dividing. Why? Because I went from three letters to two. Okay, now let's look at number two from kilo going from grams to kilograms. We are going to divide by a thousand and our answer should be 0 0.005 kg. Okay, now we're going from 250 milligrams to blank microgram. What we're going to do multiply by a thousand how we know because we are stepping up and we're also adding a letter. Okay, now just keep in mind you can't use that formula or that format or that thinking for every problem. And we know that all things are not always the same and that's okay. But for the ones that we can use it for, honey, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use that technique. Okay. Um, 250 milligrams to grams, dropping that M divided by a thousand, drop the M divided by a thousand, 0 0.5 kilograms to grams. 0 0.5 kilograms to grams. We're adding, we're dropping the K, but we're still going to multiply, okay? We are going to multiply, okay? So that's what you do want to remember, mm -hmm. okay? If you have questions, honey, you can always send these questions to info at lwpschool.com or you can drop them below in this video. I love the feedback. I love to hear from you. Um, so please drop your questions. If you have some tips and tricks on what has helped you, please let me know because I would love to include it in the presentation because it's all about us winning. There so let's talk about household measurements, okay? The most common measurement system in the United States is going to be liquid, which is volume, gallon, cup, tablespoon, teaspoon, and then dry weight is going to be pounds and ounces, okay? Please write this down because let me tell y'all something that be happening to me. It be happening to my friends. They don't know that one teaspoon is five ml. They don't know one tablespoon is 15. They, they don't know one ounce is 30. I'm not saying you. I said my friend. You my friend too, but I don't think that that's your problem. But if it is your problem, then wear the, wear the shoe. Okay, because you know they say if the shoe fit weird. But I just be trying to figure out like how is it that we not remembering this? So, and, and it's okay, friend. It's okay. Um, go ahead and write this down. One teaspoon, five ml. Write write all of it down until you get to gallon. Okay. Because if you don't remember this information, it's gonna be real tough for you to solve the problems that's on the next page. 
And it's going to be real tough for you to solve the problems inside the pharmacy because this is something that you will see in the pharmacy. You know, a lot of times I say, you know, this is just for your test purposes. No, this is also for pharmacy. And if you were cook, you probably seen sometimes that you have to follow certain recipes that say teaspoon, tablespoon, uh, or ounce of this, so on and so forth. Okay. So make sure you write this down because this is going to be helpful to you, not just in pharmacy, but in your, in your kitchen as well. So it says household measurements, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon in how many milliliters? Now, I just gave you the answer. But remember that three teaspoons is, if one teaspoon is five, three teaspoons is 15 because five times three is 15. And then it says, how many milliliters is that? That's 15 milliliters. So we are going to put one tablespoon. So right here where it says the tablespoon, that will be one. And then um, in front of the milliliters, it would be 15. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go to the next one. One ounce equals blank tablespoons equals blank milliliters. One ounce. What did we just say? That one ounce was 30. One ounce is 30. So if one ounce is 30 and the tablespoons are 15, then how many milliliters? Well, and what we, what we would have to do right here is one ounce is 30. And then it says the tablespoon. So we would have two tablespoons here where it says uh, one ounce equals two tablespoons. So it would say one ounce equals two tablespoons. And then the milliliters would be 30. I know that can be a little tricky because of the way that it reads. Don't let it catch you up. Don't let it trick you up. Okay. You got this. One cup equals blank ounces equals milliliters. So we know that in one cup, there are eight ounces in the cup. So if there are eight ounces in the cup, then how many milliliters are in the cup? And the only way we can figure that out is by knowing that one ounce is 30. So if one ounce is 30 and there are eight ounces in the cup, then we know that we have 240 milliliters as a total, as a whole. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm just checking in with you. I hope that it does. One pint equals blank tablespoons, which equals blank milliliters. One pint equals blank tablespoons equals blank milliliters. One pint is 480. So in order to find out how many tablespoons is in there, we could do one of two things. You can do 32 times 15, or we can do 480 divided by 15, which is, you know, kind of maybe a lot easier. Because if you know that one pint is 480 and one tablespoon is 15, you can do 480 divided by the 15. And whatever your answer is, that's going to be um, how many tablespoons, you know, are there. So for this particular problem, it would be one pound equals 32 tablespoons, which equals 480 milliliters. Number five says one quart equals blank pint equals blank milliliters. So one quart is 960, but we want to know how many pints can we get out of 960? The answer is two. So one quart equals two pints, which equals 960 milliliters. Why? Because two pints is 480. One pint is 480. So if we got two of them, then the other milliliter is going to be 960 combined as a total whole. Okay. So again, this may be the way that the problems look. This may be a little, um, I don't want to say uh, hard, but it could be, you know, a little bit challenging and it may require you to really apply yourself. And that's okay, friend. So don't, don't judge yourself on this, okay? Because this is designed to make the brain think and to get you really active into figuring out, okay, what is this? And how do I need to apply, you know, my knowledge, okay? Now, the next thing is calculating this body weight. Come on, baby, let's calculate this body weight. Okay, so for example, what is, what is the weight in kilograms of a 176-pound person? So always remember that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. 
Okay. So if we're, when we are converting pounds to kilograms, we are going to divide by 2.2. When we're converting pounds to kilograms, divide by 2.2 because kilograms is a smaller number than pounds. So we're always going to divide when we're trying to get kilograms because that number is smaller. So you see how in pounds, this number is big, it's 176. But then when you look at it in kilograms, it's only 80. And a lot of times in the hospital, this is how they weigh. The patient is in kilograms opposed to pounds. And so, honey, in kilograms, everybody be, you know, a nice little weight. But then when you turn it to pounds, I be looking like, wait a minute. Uh, but no, I'm just kidding. We're all beautiful in our own skin, okay? Um, but when we look at going from kilograms to pounds, we're going to multiply by 2.2 because we are trying to increase that number because pounds is a larger number. Write that down. Kilograms is a smaller number, so we're dividing by 2.2 when we're converting from pounds to kilograms. When we're converting from kilograms to pounds, we're multiplying by 2.2 because pounds is a larger number. Baby, it's free game today. Okay, free game. Okay. Um, and then there's another little um, another little conversion I want you to remember, which is grain. Okay. One grain equals 64.8 milligrams or 65 milligrams. Okay. I normally go for 65 because it's rounded and it's an easy number to use for math purposes. Um, I don't really try to mess with the decimals as much as, you know, as possible. But if I have to, I will. But for the most part, if I can round it to 65, honey, that's what I'm doing. I'm going with 65 because baby life is already uh, a challenge. I don't need to add anything else. Um, but when you look at this, how you would solve this problem is you would do one divided by 100 times 65. So first we need to turn this fraction into a decimal and then we're gonna multiply it by 65, okay? So when I think about that, I'm doing one divided by 100 times 65 and my answer is 0 0.65. I hope you're using that calculator, friend. I hope you, I just hope you're using that calculator. Um, and then for this particular problem, we drop the five and we just add the MG at the end. Okay. We don't need the, we don't need the 0 0.65. The 0 0.6 is fine. And then the next one, we do the same thing. One divided by 200 times 65 equals 0 0.3 uh, milligram. Okay. Hopefully that part makes sense. We're going to do some practice. Well, we're actually going to do a recap, which is some practice too. Um, and we'll be able to look at all of this information together. And if you have any questions about this, because I do realize that this video um, is not, you know, as long as my other videos, just because what we're covering is not super difficult. So if you have more questions or something else that you would like to see me cover that I have not covered, please let me know, okay? Um, five milliliters equals how much? One teaspoon. Please, 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 please remember that. 15 milliliters is one tablespoon. Remember, teaspoon is larger, excuse me, teaspoon is smaller than tablespoon. How do I know it? Because a teaspoon is going to be a very small spoon. I was trying to think of something to tell you, but I couldn't. Well, maybe because teaspoon has three letters and tablespoon has four. So if you got the four, you know it's going to be larger and the, the three is going to be smaller. Baby, we're going to make our way out of no way. We're going to part red seas, okay? We're going to make our way out of no way. That's what we're going to do. Three letters, small. Four letters, bigger. So teaspoon, three letters, small, five. Tablespoon, four letters, big 15 milliliters okay um and then when we get to go to ounces or we look at 30 milliliters remember 30 milliliters is one ounce that's oz 30 milli 30 milliliters is one ounce and then when we do 30 converting it into teaspoons then at that point we're going to do 30 divided by five why are we doing 30 divided by five because one ounce equals 30 one teaspoon equals five. And in order to find out how many teaspoons we can get out of the 30 milliliters, we need to divide it by the five. And that gives us six. Okay. Now, number four, we are going from 4.4 pounds to blank kilogram. 4.4 pounds to blank kilogram. So that means we're going from 
we're going to divide because we're going from the bigger number to a smaller number. When we do that, we want to divide. So we're going from 4.4 divided by 2.2, which is going to give us two kilograms, okay? Yeah, you should be getting it. You should start to, you should be starting to feel a lot better about yourself, okay? Um, and then number five says 3,000 micrograms to milligrams. Here we are again, we're dropping that C, so we're dividing by a thousand. We're dropping that C and we're dividing by a thousand. 3,000 micrograms equals blank milligram. 3,000 divided by 1,000 equals three milligrams, okay? Um, number six says one gallon equals blank pint, okay? So one gallon, 3,840 milliliters, and then one pint is 480 milliliters. We're going to divide, and that gives us eight pints. So how many pints can we get out of a gallon? Eight. I told you, friend, if you don't remember what we discussed or the chart that I showed you on the, the previous slide before, you're going to definitely struggle with trying to answer these questions. So make sure you write that chart down. Make sure you pause the video at that particular chart, baby. Take a screenshot, baby. Put it on your social media, put it on your mirror, whatever you need to do to remember it. I want you to remember that because that's what's going to help you solve these problems in the future. And then the last one, but not least, when we are looking for grains, we're going to divide the 150, the one by 150 and multiply by 65. And that's going to give us that 0 0.4 micro, or excuse me, 0 0.4 milligrams, okay? Let me say that again. The one divided by 150 times the 65 equals the 0 0.4 milligrams. And that's going to be our final answer, okay? Y'all did good today. I'm so proud of you, friend. You showed up for yourself. You showed up and you showed out. Yes, you did. So here we are with our Zoom video group tutorials. A lot of you all showed up last week. It was so good to see so many new faces and some to, it's good to see some of my returning faces. Um, if you are in the course, you don't have to worry about the group tutorials and paying the $30 because it's included in your uh, tuition. So don't worry about this. That does not, this does not apply to my friends who are taking the course because your group sessions and your time with the school is already covered in your tuition. Those of you who are not enrolled but want to get that help from LW, because baby, who gonna help you? Lindsay will. Then what you want to do is look at this and let's go ahead and get you reserved for the next Thursday, this upcoming Thursday, so you can be a part of the team. Why do we want to have group tutorials? Because it's important that while we're studying and exercising and increasing our skill set and our knowledge that we are around other individuals who are doing the same thing because birds of a feather flock together. If I want to be good, if I want to win, I need to be with winners. I don't need to be with people who are not working towards the goal. And let's be clear, just because they're not working towards the goal don't mean that they're bad people. It just means that they're not your people in this season because baby, this is the season of go get it and come back with it, okay? With that being said, we have two time slots that you can book for. We can You can book for the 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. or you can book for the 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Some of y'all have been booking both time slots because you're that dedicated and I appreciate you being committed to your goals, being committed to your dreams and allowing yourself to create space to make it to where you want to be, okay? So kudos to you. I'm proud of you. But yes, we do offer two time slots, $30 per hour, if you're interested in, in, in um, getting in that class and getting in those sessions and rubbing elbows with people who you may be working with in the future, because remember, pharmacy is not that huge. It is a very close-knit industry, and you will see some of the same people again. So this is a great time to start making those friends, because remember, a lot of times it's not what you know, but who you know, okay? They may get you through the door. So this is a good time to start making those connections, um, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is on two Thursdays, and we do have uh, Zoom video calls, and so this is a great way for you to see some good faces and also to make some good connections and to see, you know, if you have any questions that you may want to ask during class that you can't ask on these videos, okay? 
$30 per hour. But I do appreciate you showing up daily. You all have been such a jewel and you encourage me even when I don't feel like I have what it takes at times because I'm human just like you. And there are times when I doubt myself, but when I read your comments and I read all of the great things that you guys are saying about LW and all the ways that it has helped you to reach your goals, it empowers me, it encourages me. So thank you so much. Please continue to keep trusting in yourself, believing in the process. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. I don't care what it looks like. Keep moving, keep, keep winning, keep doing your best. Every day is going to get better. What you did yesterday, you may not do today, but do something to get you closer to your goals, okay? I will see you next week, same place, same time. Take care, friend. It has been a blessing to be with you all, and thanks for trusting me with your journey. See you later.